Hello everybody, you are listening to the Gamers Podcast with myself, Peter Parrish, also with Paul Younger. Hey Paul. Hello everybody. Also, also with Tim McDonald. Hi Tim. Hello. Tim, I have heard you scandalously did not watch the <laughs> VGX, uh, I want to call them the VGX Awards, I mean the A used to stand for awards, but I, I'm a little confused now as to where we stand with that, but the VGX, you didn't see it Tim, I'm disappointed in you. Um, really, what, is is that out of the fact that you now can't get any schadenfreude out of the fact that I <laughs> didn't watch it? Um, no, I, yep. I didn't watch it. I had better things to do. I think I was possibly hammering nails through my fingers or something like that. <laughs> um, I don't think I missed much, from what I can gather. In, oh, in all honesty, well, in all honesty the, reason, the reason I didn't watch it was because last year I quite famously watched it and I had a drink, an alcoholic drink, <laughs> a drink. Every, time, every time something happened that disgusted me. And I was completely wankered within about half an hour, and I think I'd have been dead within half an hour this time. But do tell. Yes. Uh, Paul, you watched some of it with uh, with me. Mm. Um, you were kind of editing a video. I was kind of stopping and starting, getting what little news there was <laughs> out of it. Um, so I wouldn't say I saw all of it, but I, I saw a substantial amount. Um, it... Uh, it's a, it was a mixed bag. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you're being really polite. I would have just called it an outright catastrophe. I'm I'm gonna like I'm gonna start with some things that I thought were almost positive about this event. Um, okay, a couple of times they allowed developers to talk about their games. That was better than previous. <laughs> and I like the fact not. Uh, Joel McHale's scripted jokes which I don't believe were his own because they were terrible but I did like his sort of anarchic spoiler-like presence uh, kind of a fox in the in the corporate hen house occasionally managing to ask a few awkward and embarrassing questions that most of the people in attendance did not know how to deal with such as hey Jeff Keighley do you have a sincere opinion on anything <laughs> which he seems completely unprepared for <laughs> I, I liked I liked the bits. I, I didn't watch the VGX as I did watch a couple of uh, low light reels. L- low light, yeah. Um, I did like the bit where he asked Tim Schafer if he was high when he came up with Broken Age. Tim Schafer <laughs> just responds with, does, does that character look high to you? He just responds with, he's talking to his spoon! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So there's, there's some good off-the-cuff stuff like that. Uh, Paul, any, any other positives for you? Um, uh, well, I quite liked. I actually quite liked McHale actually on that, mainly because a bit of a sarcastic get, and I think you kind of have to poke a little bit of fun at fun at the seriousness of it sometimes. And I, I don't know. Ever, uh, uh, if I hear the, the word awesome one more time, <laughs> and how awesome the next game is coming up, I will scream. That that is just. Oh, Keely, Jeff, 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 Jeff. What can I say? He, he is, he's quite hard to watch. I know that you have to be enthusiastic about what you're talking about, but sometimes there are probing questions to be asked. And, you know, quite rightly, um, you know, how much did they pay? Uh, did Schaefer pay to, for the voice acting in that? <laughs> you know, uh, good, valid yeah, question. Thought, valid that question. Was a, a reasonable something reasonable to ask, which was kind of glossed over and not really answered. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it was reasonable, I think. It, was, it was more his his uh, expression on his face when he was asked that question. It was kind of like, hang on a minute, this could be a tricky question. Uh, yes, I wasn't <laughs> expecting this. <laughs> <laughs> which I thought was actually quite amusing. I think it it's kind of on... I kind of see where they're going with it. Um, they do need a studio audience. Um... And for God's sake, get rid of the rap stuff outside. I mean, we're not we're not ten. I mean, the average age of the gamer isn't ten anymore. And it was just it that was car crash. And in fact, whoever was in the control room should have said, "Look, let's just not cut back to them because a they haven't got a clue what they're doing. They're probably completely mashed and has really <laughs> little relevance to talking about the games and the developers that have come in, which is what we want to see. The new games that are coming out, what developers have to say about them, and so on." The awards actually kind of, 
I wouldn't have cared if they weren't in there at all anyway. So Well it's yeah. It's it's a show kind of searching for an identity because okay, let's it it's uh Viacom owns game trailers and Spike T V, right? So it's basically Viacom who are behind this uh VGA, VGX thing. Um their purpose is to, I guess, give legitimacy to game trailers and to give them certain exclusives and stuff. Um, Viacom was certainly very active on YouTube, flagging up all the videos that were coming up from the VGX as quickly as possible. So that's the corporate incentive behind it, if you like. Um, and you're right, I mean, the awards have just kind of gone completely by the wayside. I'm not even sure if they revealed all of the winners of the awards in, during the show. I, I mean, I, I missed a few of them, so I was putting views and stuff. Um, so if it's not an awards show, is it a is it like a reveals show? I mean, then there weren't that many of those either. Um, there were a couple of new trailers, like The Witcher 3 and, and what have you, but um, reveals-wise, we got couple of Telltale things, uh, the Game of Thrones one, which had already pretty much been leaked, and um, uh, No Man's Sky, which uh, looks pretty damn interesting, but I don't think it necessarily needed the VGX <laughs> for mm. three hours to, to reveal it. Um, and all the sort of weird, uh, what did they call it, sections, viral, where it was just terrible, terrible YouTube trash, um, and Mega64, who were good. <laughs> but mostly just just abysmal stuff. So it's kind of like they... I don't know what they're trying to be um, other than to promote game trailers, and I'm not sure it's succeeding in that fashion. Hmm. That's my view. I think I think it was a uh, sort of... Oh, well, as they put it, it was an experiment, and it was an experiment that kind of went wrong, but at the same time kind of went in the right direction. Um hmm. But can, can, uh, go on, Tim. I'm just going to say, you you think it kind of went wrong, but kind of went in the right direction. I, I'll I'll point out right now. You know, I've only seen little bits of it, but from what little I saw, it just looked like a confused mess that didn't know what it wanted to be. Well, look at it this way: you watched you watched six minutes of a three-hour show. I think, yeah, on, but on from the, what you've just talked about now, the best six really minutes. A, it wasn't really an awards show. It wasn't really a reveal mm. show. It was just a show about games that was scattered and confused mm. with hosts who didn't really seem to know quite what they were doing, a fair few cock-ups, a tone that was completely off based on what you're saying about the rappers outside and things like that. So tell me, what went right? How is this a step in the <laughs> right direction? Because it's a step in the right direction, as whereas it's not um, in a big theatre with lots of uh, vacuous celebs turning up and telling us about how great they think games are. I think that's kind of done. I don't think. Okay, we... yeah, yeah, screw the celebrities, but why not do it in a big theatre anyway? Why not do something like, I think you mentioned before, why not do something like uh, the video game BAFTAs or yeah, something like that? That's, that's I mean, what you actually have people involved turning up, people who know what they're talking about. Uh, yeah. And you actually do it in a in a nice environment like that, rather than some bullshit Saturday morning kids show studio with celebrity guests outside yelling potatoes. Um, yeah, I, I, I think. I'm sorry, I, I just don't understand why you think this was a step in the right direction at all, because this seemed like a step into the trash. Well, it was a step into the trash, but it actually, for me, it kind of got more on on track about talking about the games and the developers for the time small segments that they did have it needed more of that um if if we if we hypothetically imagine an a show event whatever that has a couple of hosts who actually have chemistry um probably Joel McHale and someone else um and you stick to this sort of chat showish format and have developers coming in talking and having actually things to say which a lot of them didn't then I can see that having some sort of uh, purpose it's, it's kind of a little bit far removed from what we got but I can see that that could potentially evolve from uh, from what happened well, in, in theory well f first yeah. things first the slow hand clap when someone wins an award. I mean, what else was he supposed to do? I mean, really, they should have had enough studio audience of maybe 200 people in there. 
at least getting some enthusiasm up for the people that are winning the awards because the 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 sort of award speeches that the developers were allowed to do actually were quite fun and I, I actually thought that was really good. Um, there was just kind of like no enthusiasm for people actually winning it and that, that kind of lost, I think that's why the whole awards thing just kind of got lost on the whole show. Um, well, it, must but, have been, it, it must have been very weird for them to be delivering this kind of acceptance speech to, I assume, one, maybe two cameramen <laughs> and a couple yeah. of other people in the background, you know. Yeah, it was, it was a bit weird and, and the thing is, you know, their the whole idea that Viacom are trying to basically experiment with this, with a, with an awards format and interactivity, get, using social media and so on to try and get people involved was, is their objective. And gamers were really the test market for this to see if it worked. Um, and let's face it, gamers are going to say if it's shit or not. And generally, I think the consensus was that people didn't really like it that much. But I do think there is some positives to be taken from it. It's not a complete disaster, as, as, as some people have been making out. And it did have its funny moments. It just doesn't have the format quite right yet. I don't, uh, well, it, it didn't need to be three hours either. Um, it used to be two, I think. So I don't know quite why they added another hour on there. It could quite easily not be there, I think. Mm. Just, um, um, just in case you're wondering why I've got wrapped up, um, I kind of this is a my tribute to Jeff. I figured that I'd do the podcast a bit better <laughs> if, I had, if I had more layers on. So <laughs> I've decided to put more layers on. It, it was quite mysterious that uh, yeah, Jeff. Maybe maybe he gets cold easily, but he was wearing about four or five layers at all times. It was quite quite baffling. I don't know. Maybe these four, um, these four layers will just do it for me. Maybe that's enough. Well, you know, that's. Uh, are you feeling more inclined to say nice things about Titanfall now? Um, well, I don't know because we've got some pretty awesome stuff coming up in the show. Um, I don't know whether it's, it's The Witcher or whether it's Titanfall. Possibly The it's Witcher. Gonna be, it's going to be next, next gen. gen. Hmm. It's going to be next gen. It's going to be visceral. Yeah, next gen. Awesome. Next gen visceral Titanfall. Um, with The Witcher thrown in, and that is my top game tip for this year. Forget the rest, no other games exist. The one that I'm talking about right now is the game that I like, and it's only that game. Eat Doritos. And eat Doritos. <laughs> Doritos. Always eat Doritos. Oh god, what's happening to this podcast? Um, let's actually try and discuss what uh, was actually revealed. Um, got a couple of Telltale things. Uh, I feel like there's not much to say necessarily about the Game of Thrones thing because when they were speaking about it they didn't seem to know themselves what characters you would be controlling what what they were doing with that yet I think that's in the very early stages besides, hey we've got the license to Game of Thrones hooray uh, the one that surprised me was the, the Borderlands uh, uh, collaboration Especially because I'd written previously a story saying uh, that it had leaked that they were definitely confirming Game of Thrones. So when they showed the Borderlands thing first, I started shitting myself, thinking, oh god, the Game of Thrones thing was a complete bluff. <laughs> it was just a lie. I'm going to look stupid now. But no, that, that appeared later. Um, Tim, you are you maybe the only one who's played Telltale stuff and Borderlands? Because I know Paul's played Borderlands, but I don't know how much Telltale stuff he'd done. I haven't played any Borderlands, but have played Telltale stuff. How, Therefore, how do people manage to not play things like both Borderlands and Telltale games and yet call uh, yourself knowledgeable about gaming? But I did I play Borderlands too. And the Telltale yeah, did, you, did you do the Telltale stuff? That's the, no. you know, the, the stuff that won so many Game of the Year awards last year was heralded as... No, no? Okay. But you've played both. Yeah. So... Telltale game in the Borderlands universe. You up for that? Could certainly work. I like the Borderlands universe. It's uh, <laughs> people are probably going to argue with me about this, but I think it's well written. It's funny. Uh, it actually has good characters, and it's one of the very few. I was going to say games, but I think it's one of the very few products out there that actually manages to mix comedy and lightheartedness with. Uh, bits that are actually full of pathos, um, bits that are actually quite sad and emotional. Uh, it, it manages to walk that tightrope surprisingly well. I, I do think that there is definitely room for games in the Borderlands universe that aren't necessarily first-person shooter loot grabbers. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that, depending on what they do with it. Yep, I mean, again, it's, it's very early. They, they showed a 
a short trailer and, and basically said, we're doing this. Um, that's about all we've got so far. But All right, excellent. Um, what do we think about No Man's Sky, uh, the game that has been described by its own creator as uh, having ideas that are Peter Molyneux-esque? So, uh, we oh, should... God, well, we're doomed. We're absolutely it's self-aware. <laughs> I, I, I want to point out, actually, that when I heard about this announcement, I heard everyone going on about No Man's Sky, Mm. I thought for a moment that they were talking about Really Big Sky, which was a shooter that came out a couple of years ago, and I was wondering mm. why the hell everybody was getting so excited about something that old. I thought, oh, games journalism again. <laughs> Picking up on stuff several years old. <laughs> really Big Sky HD. Well, um, you can shoot through asteroids, so there you go. Yeah. It's got, it's got exploration, it's got spacey stuff, it's got procedurally generated atoms. Procedural <laughs> next gen, awesome. Do definitely, definitely Molyneux set a hand in this. I mean, it's it, you know, uh, <laughs> on 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 paper it sounds amazing. Uh, obviously, you kind of need to reserve uh, and temper expectations for, for how how it might end up. But I like the idea of procedurally generated planets that you can explore. You know, traveling through space in your little spaceship. Getting into space combat, discovering stuff. You know, conceptually, I, I like it a lot. I, so, conceptually, I, I like it a lot. I think that there's they, they kind of need to attach a game to it, but in terms of a base for a game, they're making all the right noises. Sorry, no, I, I just thought when Paul said Molyneux had a hand in it, I realized I, I'm pretty certain that Jeff Keighley is actually just a Molyneux designed cyborg. <laughs> <laughs> to talk about how amazing game all, all games are. Yeah, basically, he's trying to fool us, because Jeff Keighley never says man. Yeah, that's true. true. He doesn't. He that's does say confusing. awesome. Right, I, I bet you that if you if we find behind-the-scenes footage at the VGXs, you will just have Jeff Keighley sort of like this, and Molyneux will be behind him with a screwdriver. <laughs> driver. <laughs> I will give... Um, I, I, I don't know if Hello Games did this on purpose, but they have kind of amazingly pitched their game at, at, at the right event. You wouldn't think that VGX would be the right place for a sort of indie-developed, procedurally generated space game, but because there was so little else revealed, <laughs> basically everyone has talked about No Man's Sky, so it, it's kind of worked out fantastically for them. I think um, what you were meaning was so little else of interest. Well, yeah, okay. I mean, reveal oh, I mean, there, was, off, but... there, there were things of... of tangential interest. I mean, I was happy to see more Witcher 3, but it was like a minute-long trailer, so it's kind of, there's really only so much you can do with that, you know? Um, yeah, there wasn't, it, yeah, I mean, so. there wasn't so much, the thing is, it wasn't so much a, a, a reveal show, it was more of a, we're going to show you a trailer about games that we already know. So, yep. really, again, just to drive traffic to game trailers, I'm sure, but pretty much I... nothing else other than that, really. Yeah, it was it was appalling. I think that uh, Bethesda should have just announced Fallout Four. <laughs> <laughs> so do I, actually. I think they should just fuck it. We know we probably are making this. Let's just go for it. <laughs> we might not have been planning to announce it quite this early, but who cares? Let's just do it. Yeah, for the Fallout Four, sadly revealed as a hoax. Uh, it was always on the cards. That actually got a bit of a, a slight mention. Um, I think actually before they were doing the No Man's Sky trailer, uh, you know, Jeff was saying oh, we've got a big reveal, but it's not Fallout 4 contrary to <laughs> what some people were hoping for um, so yeah, and uh, Paul, this guy put quite a bit of actual cash into his hoax. Yeah, yeah, good good, good hoax, I, I, I must admit I, I, I did enjoy the hoax, I thought it was fun, um, <laughs> got the community talking, uh, which I think is always important, um, but he sent back about a thousand bucks to do this. Not so much for yeah. um, stuff like hosting and that, but I think it was actually the phone line that he rented to play back that mysterious um, message. That was something like six hundred and something dollars. So if he's if someone's got that much money just to have a fool about it with, well, a fair play to them. But uh, I don't know. A lot of people were quite unhappy about it. But I mean, it was the writing was on the wall that it was a hoax, really, anyway. But it, it was kind of. It was so kind of well done that you kind of thought, well, maybe there's just some bizarre chance that this may actually be real. It, it was a really well executed hoax. I, I have to give him props for that. Um, 
Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I can't get too annoyed about it because, as you said, it was kind of always a little bit suspicious for quite a lot of reasons. It was just so well done. Um, you know, that was actually better than several ARGs we've seen from publishers. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, and, I mean, I think he was originally building up to some sort of actual uh, CG trailer, which he, <clears throat> sorry, which he says he's going to share um, eventually, but I think he he wound up because I, I believe Bethesda or Zenimax got in contact with him and uh, started uh, putting, the, putting the squeeze on his site, I think, effectively, so he had to wrap it up quickly with uh, a good old Tunnel Snakes rule video. <laughs> And uh, some other, some other uh, fuck yous to the community, basically. Well, the thing is, it's kind of like it, it, Bethesda were so late to the party. I mean, they must have been watching mm. this. And I, the cynic, the cynic, the cynic in me thinks, yeah, you know, they kind of had this merchandise sale going on in the store, and and yeah. like, it all kind of ran through that period. All the Fallout stuff was getting promoted, and then all of a sudden, bang, it, it just stops. Yeah, they they really did start reintroducing the, the sort of Fallout <laughs> merchandise into their Twitter feeds and stuff. So, uh, yeah, and I, I don't I don't really buy their thing, their their explanation of oh well, it was you know it was getting a bit of traction on forums and people were starting to talk what, about really? it. Yeah, where have you been all month? <laughs> <laughs> Selling Fallout T-shirts, obviously. Um, so yeah, uh, I guess while we're on copyright claims and uh, rights ownership issues and stuff. Uh, there seem to be some changes going on over at the old YouTube uh, oh. where they are putting new policies in place um, to do with kind of the, the pre-screening of videos to see if you have any copyright infringing material in them, uh, which is starting to quite dramatically affect people who do um, not just Let's Plays, but other video game related stuff, like, you know, video reviews or, or even sort of parody satirical stuff. I noticed today that Video Gamer had, had done their sort of take on the VGX, um, but couldn't upload it to YouTube because they'd used some bits of footage from VGX, obviously, because they needed to for satirical purposes. So, uh, unfortunately, that's only on their rather crappy. Uh, web player that takes about a million years to buffer everything. Um, so yeah, quite a few YouTube channels seem to be getting affected by this, um, more so even than they were previously with YouTube's slightly terrible, no, very terrible um, copyright infringement uh, algorithms and stuff. Well, yeah, it, this, this this whole system has been a mess. I mean, we've fallen felt. In fact, we we abandoned our YouTube channel probably about a year ago because we kept getting flagged for stuff that was effectively actually it was our own stuff. It was stuff that we went out and filmed. Um, we'd given, been given permission to use from the publisher, like whether it's B roll or whatever, and stuff was getting flagged. And it was it was just getting ridiculous. And you know what? I got so fed up of it, I just couldn't be arsed anymore. I couldn't be bothered trying to jump through hoops, and the, bo the, the the thing with it is, is that all we did was we put up another channel. We just made sure that there was no no official trailers on it. There was nothing that could possibly be deemed as copyright infringement. The thing is, th there is so much shit on YouTube. I mean, th there really is so much gaming shit on YouTube, but there is some real gems there as well. I watched a, a brilliant. Um, uh, synopsis of the whole Sim City series from from right from the very beginning right to the end that was put together by some guy and it was really really interesting and he obviously done a shitload of research um, and yep. that is gaming great gaming content on on the other side you have people screaming at the camera and just random clips of bollocks and it's just it, honestly I'm, I'm Seriously, that, that that sort of shit, yeah, fine, copyright, infringe it away, infringe it, you bastards, get it off. Um, but there is some really good stuff there, and it's a shame that the really good stuff is going to get, you know, the same treatment as the really shit stuff. Um, the thing with YouTube is that the, the way that get, people get around this is they join one of these networks, um, which effectively have, if you join the network, you then, the network has to deal with any copyright issues, and the individual doesn't. 
So the network basically has been, got all the permissions to use the footage from the publishers and so on. So it's okay for their broadcasters to use it. That's how I think it works. So there's a lot of people sign up to networks like Machinima. And there's like maybe 10 or other so big ones. Um, but I think the issue with this is that it was a previously a caster could go onto a network and not have to worry about it. But I think now what YouTube are saying is that no, the networks are now not exempt. So you yeah. can't hide behind that yeah, network and effectively upload your so-called copyright material. Mm. It, it's a really weird one, this, because I don't kind of get my head around it um, from publisher's point of view. If someone's using small clips from a game, maybe it's 10 seconds, 20 seconds, or whatever footage, for, for fuck's sake, people are create, being creative and actually promoting your product online. Um, and the YouTube is just it's just such a massive audience so people are telling them about your product I mean it's like it's almost like free advertising space that you're getting I don't I don't get it I, I kind of understand if someone maybe takes um, well actually, I'm really trying to think of it, of a where, where it wouldn't be good um, to get your stuff shown off to such a big audience especially um, casters that already have um, a, a, already have a lot of subscribers I can't get my head quite quite get my head around it it really baffles me and i think um the whole thing needs to be reevaluated and the whole the whole system of getting copyright material flagged needs to be evaluated i think if you're a publisher you, you look at two things you look at one some of the people on there are making a lot of money and using footage that belongs to us we'd quite like that money <laughs> um and i think the second thing is they always want the control over how things are portrayed you know they because there's a few decent video reviews up there that actually shock horror criticize games for being a bit rubbish sometimes, and I, I think if you're a publisher and you could squash that review with a with a bullshit copyright claim, then you're going to do that, aren't you? Yeah. If you're a dick. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think you're right. I think I think it is about control. It is about how products are perceived. I understand that to a certain extent. Um, you don't want to. Um, suddenly cut a bit of, uh, you know, Mortal Kombat in with a bit of Super Mario and then say that it's Super Mario. Um, and then everyone's going, oh, look at Super Mario, I man. They're, they're ripping people's heads off and stuff because people are stupid. But um, not everybody's stupid, but some people may look at it like that. <laughs> what a weird hypothetical yeah, situation. I know, I know that was weird. In fact, I'm gonna have to go, I'll have to make that after this is finished. But <laughs> <laughs> you, won't, you won't get it through, man. No, Copyright but I, I think... I think I think there, there, there is a very fine line here, and I think it's, it, this is going to be a real, really difficult one for them to sort out. And if I was a caster, right now and making a living off YouTube, I'd kind of be shitting myself a little bit because I, I think, um, something will happen with this, and I think people are going to be in a lot of trouble. I mean, I'm wondering if basically the publishers are going to approach the largest, uh, the, the people with the most subscribers, and effectively just try and cut them a deal and go like, look, we want at least half your revenue. You can carry on if you give us a, a large chunk of, of, of your earnings. Cause well, can, can you think of the minefield that would be, though? Can you think of, honestly, some, they're going to have somebody in a publisher's office sifting through all the videos to try and find clips of footage and then have to then correspond with each individual to try and... No, no, that's what I mean, though. They, they, only, they only they talk to the big ones, the ones who are already established. Um, and then fuck the rest. Just do copyright claims, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> possible, but unfortunately, the, the the thing with YouTube videos is the ones that are usually the big ones are usually the shit ones. Um, and that is a problem. Yes, that is a problem. Um, yeah, the the hidden gems that you're talking about maybe do, you know, ten thousand views or so, but they're they're not the ones who who get the millions usually. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, hidden gems like this this bloody vidcast, for example, an absolute gem. <laughs> It's so well hidden. <laughs> I can see a little bit of a Diab or a Dungeon Keeper devil behind you, Paul. I'm afraid that's owned by uh, uh, Bullfrog International and Peter Molyneux. I can also see, I think, a, uh, is that a TIE Fighter uh, as well? <laughs> Isn't it EA at this point? That's even worse. Yeah, yeah. There's a, actually, there's a, there's, a half -life, there's a Half Life picture there as well in the back. So, um, yep. yeah, that Valve would be right on my ass. In Think games, all the games, all uh, uh, subsidiary of Valve Corporation. <laughs> yes. every, Think of all the games we've mentioned in that VGX. So I mean, I mean, Christ, this is even a you know, this is a a, a, a freaking Starbucks coffee mug from Seattle. <laughs> so uh, I am really, I am really screwed. 
<laughs> I don't think they make video games. You're probably all right there. Oh, no, but they'll be on it. I mean, God forbid. This pen, for example, it's a bit of plastic, probably made in some factory that's going to screw me over. I don't know. It's fair use, man. Fair use of that pen. <laughs> it's fair that I use this pen. Yes. yes, it is fair use, but the problem is you'll have to uh, petition YouTube to point this out, and it'll take three years yeah, yeah. and uh, court yeah. case. Actually, yeah. that's the thing as well. It, it's also the, the severe frustration that people have with actually dealing with YouTube. They're, you just can't deal with them. If you if you try and um, get a response on a claim on your... You could sit there for months. I know that from one example from one of the David Brevik one, which you put in the story that you put up, that took two and a half months for them to actually uh, actually say, oh yeah, look, it is all your own stuff. By yeah. that point, your your all your viewership's gone. They're not. No one's interested in it anymore. It just sits there in, a, in an archive anyway. Do okay. one. Yeah. So the the many thousands of people who watched that David Brevik video at the time that was um, when we weren't getting any money out of it, which was a bit shit. Um, and then yeah, when it's when it's unflagged by YouTube, it's. Uh, it's it's kind of not very timely anymore because all the Diablo stuff and Marvel Hero stuff he was talking about is probably already it's already out there. People have already reported on it. So yeah, a bit a bit shit on YouTube's part all around. Yeah. It's it's a bit chaotic right now. And as you say, if uh, you were making your living from doing this in any way, I would probably be quite concerned <laughs> and possibly be looking for contingency plans right now. Um, I, I don't know if there's any other channels people can really go to though because I mean uh, what's it called Vimeo or whatever is even more restrictive with copyright yeah. um, I, so I, I don't know unless someone else wants to start one hey there you go entrepreneurs <laughs> you want to start copyright free uh, gaming TV and then have a million corporations yeah, yeah. <laughs> and trying to destroy you instantly <laughs> no one will touch that with a barge pool <laughs> everyone, will, everyone will just move to Twitch yeah, that's true. Everyone will just live stream and whatever. Well, no, you don't even have to do that. If you want to do a proper uh, Let's Play video or something like that, all you've got to do is just uh, live stream. You record it, you put it full screen on your monitor, the video, and then you just live stream that, and then it's uh, it's queued up in Twitch as a previous broadcast. I do find it interesting, and I don't know if it's just a coincidence, but the minute that both PS4 and Xbox One jump on the sort mm. of Twitch streaming bandwagon, uh, all of a sudden copyright infringement is, is more of a big deal. Um, that might just be a coincidence, the timing of that, but it, it does kind of seem like the major players are uh, exerting a bit more a bit more pressure on things these days, which uh, to some extent is within their right, but is also really shit. <laughs> so, <laughs> so there you go. Um, anything else in, in the news that we have not covered? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, um, Star Citizen got another million. Get out! <laughs> uh, well, Tim, come back, come back! I didn't mean it. I really didn't mean I'm it. I'm amazed. I'm amazed Chris Roberts wasn't on the VGX whoring himself out some more. For <laughs> come, doing a little lap dance for all the gamers. Look, I'll point. show you my spaceships if you rain money on, on down upon me. Doing a little dance, I expect him to fucking drive onto the set in a solid gold Ferrari. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Possibly land in a real spaceship. Just, uh, you know, we, we kind of go over this a little bit time and again, but think about what cynicism met uh, Tim Schafer's uh, Broken Age, getting three and a half uh, million dollars and then like having to split the game up and stuff. Think about how badly people reacted to that. And then think about how people are going to react when something goes slightly wrong for the game that's earned fifty million dollars or whatever it is at that point. Oh, t Tim, I can just the smile is already beaming at the thought of server connectivity problems, hacks. Come on, it would be hilarious. <laughs> this is going to be great for us. Think of the news stories we can write about that, and think how many people are going to be. Flooding to our site to complain. I've, I've explained my position on Star Citizen before. Okay, I I hope it's a good game. It sounds like the story. No, you don't. No, you no, don't, no, Tim. No, you don't. No, you don't. Yes, I do. I want it to be a good game. It sounds like the sort of game I would really enjoy. That said, I don't want people to keep throwing fucking money at it. Uh, and I just think it would be very funny if, after all of this money and time and hype, it turned out to be shit. Basically, I win either way. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, right. That's a real. Either it's terrible and I get about a month of solid laughter, or it's really good and I get a good game to play. What if everyone reacts very maturely to the fact that it's not the second <laughs> coming of Game in Christ? <laughs> yeah, and they're all like, you know, I, I I respect the fact that they tried to make this game and they did their best. Um, I'm and I, it. I think it's going past the window, Peter. <laughs> Could happen. You never know. It's possible. It's not possible. It's not possible. It's a lie. Um, yeah. So there was that. Uh, there was a five-year-old story about the NSA spying on MMOs. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was funny. Which, a story that was already, actually revealed five year, five years ago was suddenly a story again this week because it was, uh, was tied to um, Edward Snowden. Um, mm. b- very bizarre. Very bizarre. In fact, it made it. It was made even made the radio here. On the radio oh, really? 2's news, uh, it was kind of like their last segment about, "Ooh, did you know that trolls can be spying on you in games?" It was like, <laughs> "Yeah, yeah, okay, we kind of that was reported five years ago, but hey, tell us again, why not?" Yep, there we go. People not keeping up with the MMO news. <laughs> no, <laughs> that, I'm not um, sure that's, that, that's not keeping up. Keeping up well, would be stuff that's actually current. This is several years old. It's half a decade. Half a decade. <laughs> yeah, that's that's not so much failing to keep up. That's pretty much, I don't know. That's failing to hang on to a rope that's dangling five years behind it. <laughs> pretty much. Um, well, I'm tired of news now. Let's talk about games instead. Um, but that, of course, depends on people having played games uh, this <laughs> week. Uh, which Tim is looking a bit shifty on. Uh, I played some. Paul, did you play any? I was playing I the same start? stuff, actually. I was playing Grim Dawn again this week. Blimey. And Grim. I played um, Speedball 2's HD edition. I'll, I'll talk about that, shall I? I, I, played, I played one match of that, so I can join in on that. Oh, you did? <laughs> okay. Um, did, uh, did you find it quite easy? Um, no, I found it really difficult to start with, but that was because oh. my keyboard controls got mysteriously fucked up. Uh, so left arrow key was moving me up and uh, enter was moving me right And I can see why that might have caused problems <laughs> yeah I, I was thinking Jesus this has got terrible controls maybe uh, maybe they took the uh, leaf out of Cod's book and, and remapped all the keys or... <laughs> that's kind of annoying considering Speedball 2 has literally five keys <laughs> up, down left right and do a thing I mean I Action. Like. To, to answer your question, I played one match and I played against Revolver um, oh, and oh. won, and their Revolver, so that shouldn't be a surprise. But if I mm. if I remember Speedball Two, and I do, uh, it was only one or two teams in each league that were desperately hard. Most of the rest were pretty fair for sort of the players' yeah, the time. But yeah, well, here's here's the thing: I, I have been playing it. I've, an hour and a half or so, I don't know how many matches that is, maybe 15, 20, something like that. Um, I'm finding it pretty easy so far, uh, a lot easier than uh, the Amiga version was. Um, I'll just give you an idea, you start off in a, in a cup, and yeah, you play against Revolver first, and they're shit, that's so you a, beat them. That's a small arena, a cup. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yes, you're playing in a cup, uh, it's very compact, I'll very, very leave. difficult just to... Go. Anyway, uh, in the semi-finals, I, I beat uh, I think Violent Desire. The, the names are still great, by the way. <laughs> Violent Desire is a great name for a team. Yeah. Um, and then in the final, I was up against Steel Fury. Now, Steel Fury are the best, or were always the best team in the second division. I beat them three hundred and two to four <laughs> um, without without really having to pay that much attention to what I was doing. So I think it's quite a bit easier than it used to be. Um, considering, whole... considering that actually beating Steel Fury tended to require either quite a lot of luck or a hell of a lot of money being spent. Right, upgrades. Yeah. yeah, I'd say so. Even then, it used to be a very close match. Yeah, so... I mean, the main thing I've noticed is that... Um, so in Speedball 2, you, you get... I guess if people don't know what this is... Uh, it's kind of like a future sports. Um, uh, it's not it's quite the run. best future sport. 
not quite not quite Running Man, but in in that vein, if if Running Man met American football, that kind you, of thing. Yeah, you you have a pitch. You have to get a ball by throwing it uh, basically into the enemy's goal. Uh, yeah. But there's all sorts of little power ups dotted around. Like there's stars you can light up to get bonus points and so on. And you are free to punch, kick, and otherwise bludgeon the enemy team. In fact, if you get someone sent off with an injury, you get bonus points. You certainly uh, do. Um, and so the, the way that you used to... Uh, the way I used to always play was to get the uh, the score multipliers, which are like, there's a kind of loop-the-loop -loop thing at the side of the pitch, and if you get the ball through there, then instead of getting 10 points for a goal, uh, you'll first get 15, and then you'll get 20. Um, now the AI in the Amiga version used to try really hard to stop you getting those, and in fact would try pretty hard to get them for itself. In this version, they basically don't give a fuck. Uh, you can just get that multiplier, multiplier as easily as you like. Even when they're stood right next to it, they'll barely attempt to, <laughs> to try and reduce yours or, or add to theirs, which is kind of the main indication to me that it's a hell of a lot easier um, than it used to be, which it's kind of a shame because I'm just like waltzing through it um, at the moment and realistically the people who are going to buy this <coughs> are people who have played Speedball 2 in the past so they're going to know what they're doing. How is it difficult to make Speedball 2 again? Particularly if you're just doing Speedball 2 HD, just make the same game! <laughs> so in, in this case, I don't know. That that sounds like an AI issue. But considering you were playing yeah. against Steel Fury, does that also imply that the teams have been toned down a bit as well? I I think they have because I was because I was getting plenty of knockouts against Steel Fury, which just like never never really happened. You might get no. one if you concentrated very hard on one player. Um, yeah. Well, on the other hand, your centre forward would be dead by half time. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Um, so yeah. It doesn't have the original theme tune, which is a terrible that's, oversight. Yes, I'm, they've, they've replaced the intro. Yeah. That made me so sad. They've, they've just got like a diorama of men. Yeah. <laughs> and that's rubbish. Sexy don't want that. We, we want, the, we want the, the blinking as the text appears and all. Oh. Yeah. We want the massive view so of the arena from outside. So that's wrong. Um, yeah. Wrong. wrong. It, it doesn't have any online multiplayer, which I think is a pretty major oversight. Mm. It does, it does have local co-op, uh, lo local play, doesn't it, LAN? It does have local multiplayer, yes, which is, which is I'm, good. I'm, I'm assuming it's not LAN, I'm assuming it's probably same computer, but... Yeah, it is, it is. Um, um, so, I mean, that's fine, but I mean, you, surely... In this, surely... in this day and age, lack of online is a bit sad, but mm. I, I can kind of, I could forgive that if the base game was sufficient, which, from what you're saying, it might not be. Uh, I, 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 I don't love the, the graphics style either. I mean, they've basically reused the animations and kind of painted over it with a with with new colours and stuff. But, you know, I I like the Amiga colour scheme. I like how that looks still. Um, I've got, I've got it on an emulator and it's it still looks pretty nice compared to this. Um, this is the thing that I... I I could put up with all of this stuff if it was the same game. Mm. Uh, I would love Speedball 2. I would love to be able to play Speedball 2 without having to faff about with emulators or anything like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, and in this case, I've got to say, it, it feels, from my astounding amount of experience with it, it feels like they've got the mechanics right. It feels right. Um, in terms of Probably. the way for the most part. Yeah, not entirely, but mostly. It, it feels a hell of a lot closer than any of the other recent Speedball remakes that mm. have been attempted. Um, yeah. It, it, I don't know, it's it's just sad if what you're saying is true. I'm, I'm well, hoping I mean, you're actually wrong, and it turns out you're just really good at Speedball now for some reason. That's possible. That's possible. <laughs> no, it's not. Um, I mean, I, I wouldn't have minded them toning down the difficulty slightly in like the first league and then kind of adding more leagues or something like that and it gradually ramping up there's something to be said for that but oh, um, I did hear someone say it's apparently got like a 10 year career mode now or something like that it does it, it's kind of weird okay so in in career mode it's still only a couple of leagues uh, the, the familiar ones the ones that are familiar to you 
Yeah. Um, but you can dick around in it for 10 years if you need time to like level up your guys and, and get good enough, which I'm not sure you necessarily do because it's quite easy now. Um, and playing playing the career mode then sort of unlocks challenge leagues, which are sort of like the Galactic League and stuff like that, where you play against alien teams, which may be where the, the difficulty is, is now hiding, uh, except that. But it seems sort of weird that they didn't just incorporate these extra leagues into the career mode, um, and that you you go out of league, you know, league one or whatever, and into the the Champions Cup and and what have you. But so I don't know. I need to play around with that more and, and get promoted and see how that if that does indeed work that way. Um, but yeah, I'm a bit disappointed in it in the moment. At the moment, to be honest with you, uh, that's that's sad. That is a bit sad. Yeah. Boo hoo. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like when they redid. Since all world of soccer for the uh, 360, and I managed to fuck that up quite badly as well. <laughs> it's very disappointing. Um, so yeah, that's what I've played lately. I've played more things, but I'm tired of hearing my own voice. So what? <laughs> what have you guys played? I haven't played much else. I've, I've obviously been doing those Arthur Bruno interviews this week, so I've kind of carried on yeah. because I kind of started, and now I'm going to finish. Keep playing Grim Dawn. Um, till the new content arrives, well, till new bits and pieces arrive, which is going to hopefully happen soonish. Although they do say that Act Two isn't coming out this year now, so it's a little bit frustrating. Um, dabbled a little bit in Diablo Three, still still liking that expansion. Um, yeah, it's um, yeah, it's nice, much better, much better. I'm enjoying it more actually than I thought I would. Um, but other than that, I don't really want to talk about that stuff because I just don't. So. Um, I've already talked about Grim Dawn massively in the interview, so Tim, okay. over to you. Tim, are you looking forward to Frost Winter Mess in, in Dota 2, or whatever that's called? Probably. So yeah, I've, I've just been looking through my Steam library to try and find stuff that I've played recently that is actually recent uh, and <laughs> appropriate. Mm. Uh, oh, I played a bit of Starbound, I suppose. I played... Uh, that's uh, relevant. Season. And now everyone loves store, store bound, store bound. <laughs> That's some sort of rubbish no, it's shopping it's, simulator. Yeah, it's called Racketeer, Peter. <laughs> oh yes. No, Starbound, everyone everyone's falling over themselves to love Starbound, so uh yeah. no, everyone's falling over themselves to love it until today's patch. Oh. oh. Today's today's patch. Well, in fairness, from what I can gather he was up for basically eighteen hours straight working on it, and there is from my gather, there is a little bit of an oversight in the code because he kind of streamlined the systems. Like before, everything was graded on a scale from one to a hundred. Like uh, the easy planets were level one, the really really hard ones, the end game ones were level a hundred in terms of difficulty. To, to explain and quickly, Star Starbound is basically Terraria with space bits, right? Pretty much. Okay, well, good. Uh, All right. But yeah, he um, he flattened the leveling system a bit, so now it's just one to ten. The problem mm. arises that, from what people are claiming, the weapon system is still working from 1 to 100. Which means that by the time you get, for instance, level 15 weapons, which yep. is pretty early on, they're doing more damage than you should have at the very end yeah. of the game. Like, half a game ahead of where you should be. Right, right. Um, so, yeah, it's a little bit broken today. But I'm, I'm mostly impressed with what I've seen. Um, there's still quite a lot of work to do. There's bits and pieces like the quests and stuff like that that needs to be put in. But I've I've got my spaceship. I built a little hut. I flew around the galaxy a little bit after fueling up on wood and coal. Um, oh, that, see, every spaceship, every spaceship is fired by wood and coal. NASA, <laughs> you've got it all wrong. Rocket fuel, forget it. Wood and coal. <laughs> Never mind all this warp cut off bullshit from Star Trek. Yeah, who knows? Maybe, maybe it's just some sort of engine that can uh, convert anything that's got sufficient energy within it. I don't know. It's Into science. Um, so, is it? Does it sufficiently distinguish itself from Terraria with this uh, zipping about the galaxy business, or, or is it sort of a refined Terraria, which in itself would not be a bad thing? I haven't played it enough. I'd, I'd say okay. right now it's probably about halfway between the two. Um, oh. From what I can gather, what it should be when it's finished is something a lot more impressive. Right. Um, the way it works is the entire galaxy is, or sorry, the entire universe is procedurally generated. 
um, which means that the coordinates of each planet act as like a seed. So if you find a planet you particularly like, you can then give those coordinates to your friends and they will find the exact same planet. That's um, clever. Yeah, which is, which is quite neat, particularly when you've got 10 million, billion, zillion stars, um, which is kind of what it appears to be. Um, so, you know, if you, if you want to cheat and find planets where there's shitloads of resources, then you can probably find coordinates for them online. Conversely, if you just want to play as a random explorer, you can just hit the random button on your spaceship and fly somewhere where no one has likely ever been before. Mm. Um, and where yeah, no man has gone before. Indeed. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to shout to you for that one, I'll let you off. Thank you. Um... But yeah, it, on planets it functions very much like Terraria. You know, you mine blocks, chop down trees, get ore, you build a furnace and a crafting table and make yourself a little house and then build a pickaxe because mm -hmm. uh, in a move that really amuses me, the you kind of start off with a matter converter or something like that, I can't remember what it's called, and I can basically cut down trees or dig up blocks or whatever except it is terrible at it, and it is much better to just get a stone pickaxe as quickly as you can, <laughs> because tying a rock to a stick is far more effective <laughs> than sci-fi lasery thing it's cutting out for. You have the world's worst matter converter that you bought in the bargain bin at Tesco, I guess. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, yeah, I, I quite like it. The combat's changed a bit uh, in a good way. I mean, all the, or most of the monsters are randomly generated, and they have randomly generated attacks and stuff like that as well. I came across birds that were vomiting acid blood at me. Um, Ooh, nice. Which wasn't much fun. There were oh. sort of little bulls that charged at me and these other things that leapt into the air and tried to body slam me. Um, but you can equip different things in each hand, which makes a bit oh. of a difference. Um, like, you can have a shield in one hand, you can have a knife in the other, or you can use a two-handed broadsword, or you can find a gun... Whatever. Um, and yeah, there, there is a lot of potential there, which is the games journalist way of saying it's not great just yet, but <laughs> it looks like it might be in the future. And, that's, that's and I don't want to commit to writing it off, because when it does become amazing in the future, I'll look silly. Hey, <laughs> well, you could, say, you could say that about Battlefield 4. <laughs> yes, yes, you can. <laughs> yeah, but I was more than happy to slag that off. Um, no, uh, I'm reasonably enjoying it, but I haven't played it enough to, to form a solid opinion. I mean, I've played it yeah, for, I don't know, let's see what it says. A few hours, basically. Does um, it really say on your Steam account, a few hours? No, it says three hours. Well, there you so. go, then. <clears throat> but uh, the, things, the way Steam works, that might be closer to four, or it might be closer to two, I'm not quite sure. Yeah, um, yeah it's, uh, it's sufficiently vast... Uh, and sufficiently expansive that I really do need to spend more time with it. Uh, and as soon as, as as soon as the weapons are fixed, I'm probably going to play a little bit and uh, write something up on it, uh, a little preview piece. Hopefully, I'll have some your thoughts that was on it. Going to be my question. That was going to be my question: whether we would be getting a preview, and the answer is yes. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Hurrah! So. Yes. Um, what else? Well, I know what else is coming up. I have reviewed uh, some Crusader Kings 2 DLC, the religious one, uh, Sons of Abraham, so that review will be popping up. Uh, I also played and reviewed a game called SteamWorld Dig, which I played before uh, Speedball 2, which is quite good. So look out for the review of that. You, that was wait, a 3DS port. You, you played it before Speedball 2. How old is this game? <laughs> no, God. Well, it's, it's very, it's very like Dig Dug, so I guess you could say it's about ah. thirty years old. <laughs> hey, uh, uh, but Dig Dug's amazing, so that's fine. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, it's weird actually. The a couple of the games that I've enjoyed most this year have been either Nintendo Wii or Nintendo 3DS ports. I'm, I'm not sure. Maybe I should just buy Get out. a 3DS. Leave, <laughs> leave. I don't know, I don't know what's, what's going I, on. I really want a 3DS. Yeah. No, you don't, Tim. This, no, is the, don't. this is the man who wants a 3DS. He's got, he's got a fucking Oculus Rift sitting on his desk and he wants a 3DS. No, I want to play everything. <laughs> yeah, Tim, I want to hear about your Oculus, Oculus Rift. Rift. Oculus, about your Oculus. Euro Truck adventures. The Oculus Rift doesn't have Shin Megami Tensei games. Well, it might do one day. One day. 
one day. One Someday. Day. So yes, uh, up currently on the site is, uh, as Paul mentioned, a two-part interview with uh, Arthur Bruno, uh, in which, uh, well, what does he talk about in that, Paul? Oh, everything. Bruno, obviously. But <laughs> everything, everything from everything. gameplay, <laughs> mechanics, loot. Character classes, the business of running an indie studio, lots of different things he's covered. He, he, he's very candid. He talks quite freely, so definitely worth um, worth watching, even if you're not yeah, interested it's... in the game. But just from to see how it's like to be like an indie dev and the struggles that you have, and especially if you've got lead poisoning, he's your man to ask. Speaking as the uh, poor bastard who had to transcribe the entire yeah. thing, yeah, it's it's quite an interesting interview. <laughs> there are. Uh, even if you're not that interested in Grim Dawn, there are a lot of topics touched on, even coming down to how difficult it is to actually develop something that's in early access and the amount of time you have to spend polishing it to keep it fun while still trying to add in new stuff. It's 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 interesting. Um, it provides a pretty good insight into the current state of indie game development. Good. Uh, we've also got, uh, Tim, your review of Broken Sword 5, uh, Episode 1. Yeah. And a preview of War of the Horny Hairy Blood Men. And yeah. uh, there is also a feature from me talking about how I'm not a big fan of Steam's uh, refund policy or lack thereof. Well, no, they do have one. It's just a mess <laughs> <laughs> and horribly restrictive. Uh, so you can read all of that on the site. Um, uh, what else do we have? Well, as we trailed. Last week on the podcast, we are sorting out and are very close to having finalised the categories and games and all that stuff for Readers' Awards. Um, so you'll soon be able to vote on things like your favourite third-person action adventure thing <laughs> from 2013, or uh, favourite strategy game, or uh, worst PC launch, and uh, things like that. So look out for those and uh, other other end of year stuff coming from us but no, no lists no 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 lists no lists uh, I mean I guess if I do worst PC launch it's sort of technically a list because I'll be oh. talking about three or four distinct games <laughs> arranged one above the other but I'm not ranking them it's we, could, we, could arrange, we could arrange yeah. them diagonally on the page yeah true, true. Well, we <laughs> jump back and forth between talking about different ones we will probably be doing lists when we're sort of writing about our own personal favourites of the year and stuff like that. But, you know, they won't be top ten lists or anything like that. No. Oh, can we not have top ten boobs in video games or the largest yeah. buttocks in video games or something? <laughs> the biggest oh, arse in video games. Oh, back to the VGXs. Okay. <laughs> yes. Uh, if you watched the VGX, you, did in, you already saw the biggest arse in video games. And I'll <laughs> leave you to make that connection. Ding! <laughs> <laughs> and on, on that bombshell, uh, thank you very much for listening. I'm leaving before I get slapped with a lawsuit from Viacom. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Bye. Bye.